Crafters and Stationery Enthusiasts, it's Christy here, Snarky Wordsworth over on Instagram and Reddit. And yes, today I am showing my face on the video. Uh, I've only done this a handful of times over the course of the existence of this channel, but because I wanted to talk a little bit more about the Ohio Pen Show and my experience there, uh, it felt a little bit strange just sort of videotaping my hands, not really doing anything for large swaths of time. So this felt like a nice little alternative. Uh, hopefully it won't be a hot mess. Mm. Um, also happy late fountain pen day. Sorry I didn't get a chance to post anything on Friday, but uh, I hope everybody had a fantastic time uh, either shopping or just really enjoying your own collections. Uh, I know I had a fantastic time. I was at the Ohio Pen Show on Friday. Um, and I was only able to go for the one day, but I did go uh, early. I paid a little bit extra so I could get in at the nine o'clock opening. A lot of people were not quite set up, which was totally fine. It was really fun to sort of see the show sort of really get rolling. Uh, everybody had coffee <laughs> because it was so early, um, but it was just a lot of fun. Um, and I've had fun at the Ohio Pen Show in the past. It's just, it's a great show. Um, pretty sizable considering it's in the middle of Ohio and not on one of the coasts because those are the really big shows I feel uh, in Chicago of course uh, but like enough people to be like a really fun event but not so many that you just feel like you can't get to everything and it's just too big of a crush no it's like Ohio Pinch is really really fun and really nice anyway um, I had certain things that I wanted to get done in mind. Uh, I had a certain pens that I wanted to get customized and a certain pens that I wanted to get tuned and I wanted to be able to shop a little bit and I did those things and overall, fantastic time. So the first thing that I did when I got there was I ran around to the Nibsmith tables and I signed up for slots to have certain pens serviced. Um, one pen in particular I knew I wanted to see Richard Binder for especially. He's just got such a great reputation and I really loved this pen, but it was giving me so much trouble. And that is my Sailor 1911L. Uh, and this is in the shining blue. It's my first extra fine Sailor. I've had loads of fines and MFs and mediums, but this was the first EF. And at first I loved it. So when we're talking about extra fine, as far as Sailor goes, this is like virtually needlepoint. It's crazy. But a couple of months ago, I am an idiot and I let a friend use it, let being kind of a strong way to put it, uh, a friend used this pen and this friend does not use fountain pens and all of a sudden it was catching every time I tried to write anything. Like it was also weirdly kind of gushing out ink anytime I tried to write and it, it just was, it was just a horrible writing experience and I put it in my drawer and I just didn't touch it and I was just like kind of thinking, well, whatever, I guess that's that. Um, but I decided, hey, maybe, maybe it can be fixed. It felt like maybe it was just an alignment issue. And but the ink thing was weird. Anyway, I decided that this was the one that I wanted to have Richard take a look at. And he did. And it's now so fantastic. So he had told me that it was just slightly out of alignment, but that actually at the factory level, it looked like there were some things that were unfinished. So he got that all squared away. And now um, with a drier ink, it's right back to a perfect extra fine line, like as lovely and thin and clean as when I first got it. But it also just writes so much better. With a wetter ink, I can now get a line that's like far more smooth than any other sailor that I have. And it still has feedback. Don't get me wrong. That's precisely why I love sailors because I do like that pencil -y feel, but the line of ink is just beautiful. And of course you'll see some examples of that, but I was just so pleased. And Richard and his wife were just such lovely, lovely people. I, this is not a humble brag. This is overt brag. I helped them set up their uh, credit card machine in the morning because they were having some trouble with a new phone. And like, they were just so gracious about everything. Like they were just really chill. They're like, we'll get it to work. It'll be fine. And it, a lot of other events that I go to that aren't necessarily pen focused, people are always so like high stress, like super intense and they just weren't they were just like people that you'd love to sit down and have a conversation with and and I just really enjoyed that so 
yes, I highly recommend seeing Richard for any kind of pen needs. Um, I was, I got to play with the different customized nibs that he does as well. And they were really beautiful, but he only really does one at a time. So this was the one that I definitely knew I wanted to see him about and I'm incredibly happy. Okay, so after I had my sailor pen uh, taken care of, I had two nibs that I knew I wanted to get custom ground, and there was only one person that I had in mind to do that because I'd heard so many good things on YouTube about him. A couple of vloggers that I really, really love and respect had said nothing but wonderful things to say about him, and so I, of course, had to go see Kirk Spear of Pen Realm. I signed up for a 12 o'clock slot. He was working, running right on time and his whole team was just really, really great. Uh, they're really funny, really charming people. And Kirk himself is just a really great guy. He's really patient. He answers all of your questions. He's really great about double checking the angle at which you write uh, and which you hold your pen. And I just, I just really, really appreciated his approach to doing the custom grinds. The first pen that I knew I needed to have taken care of was my Banu Euphoria in the Goulet Pens exclusive colorway caramel latte. I love this pen. It's absolutely beautiful. I never write with it because I hate the way it writes, um, which is funny because everybody else loves the way this thing writes. So Schmidt nibs write very wet, at least the one that comes in these. I originally had ordered this in a bold and that was the hottest of hot messes. It, no matter how much larger I made my writing, it was just not viable for me. It looked terrible, not because of the pen. This is not the pen's fault. This is a me thing. Uh, and, and so I swapped down to a medium nib. It didn't look horrible when I wrote, but it also didn't look great. And I also just didn't feel comfortable with the way that it would flow. It was just, it was just too much. It was just too much for me. <laughs> um, and I debated for a long time, do I want to get a fine Schmidt or do I want to get a custom ground? And I decided to go the custom ground route because if you watch this channel for any length of time, you know, I love a really good stub style nib. And I figured this was my shot to get like something really kind of special. And so I ended up getting Kirk to grind this into a smooth cursive italic in the medium. And now I absolutely love this thing. I have been writing with it so much in the last couple of days. It's kind of crazy. And it just, it works so, so well. It handles shimmer ink beautifully because it is like quite a wet nib still, but now my handwriting has so much more character rather than just looking sad and blobby. Like there's real like definition between the variation and the line. It's just, it's so good. And by making it like, I knew I didn't just want to stub. I wanted it a little bit crisper by making it that smooth cursive italic. You still get a lot of the variation, but it's, it's feels really nice across the page. There's no catching. You don't have to be quite as conscious. At least I have not had to be in the last couple of days. I've just written and not really been like super mindful about it. And it still looks gorgeous. And I'm very, very happy about that. Now, the other nib that I wanted to get custom ground is a Caveco nib. So I have it right now in my little baby uh, macchiato sport, but I think I might swap it into one of my ALs. And I had this moot gr ground from a really terrible bold, like a really terrible bold, and it came factory terrible, um, down to a really beautiful 45 degree angle um, architect, which you're probably not going to be able to see in this shot. So we're probably going to do a cutout and close up later. And it's so cool. I have never had a chance to really play around with architect nibs. But I do know that for some things that I write, I tend to write in all caps. And I know that the architect nib looks amazing in that. And so I thought, why not try it? And I'm so happy. There are so many things that I'm planning to do with this. And right now I have it inked up with KWZ's Honey. And it looks so cool. It's perfect for fall. And I just, I'm so, so happy with this. Um, definitely going to play around with it some more to see what other kind of interesting things my writing can do with it. But even just now, like the all caps looks fantastic. Very, very happy. 
Okay, so I had one more pen that I needed to have serviced that this weekend, and this one I had done by Linda Kennedy, and this is my Sailor Pro Gear Slim from the uh, Fairy Tale line. So this is the one in the Dragon Palace, and this one was just sort of a weird tuning issue. I use it all the time. I really love this pen, but it was kind of starting to write a little bit weird, like not scratchy precisely, but it just didn't feel the way it always had. And so I went to her and she tuned it and she explained a couple of things about the way that I hold my pen uh, and how that would cause wear and tear over time. Um, I write fairly lightly, but even when you do write lightly, if you tilt your hand just in a certain way, it's definitely going to wear more on one of the times than the other. And long story short, probably a maintenance thing. Uh, but she tuned it and it writes better than when I first got it. I am so in love with this now. It's just gorgeous. Um, while it still has feedback again, which you want when you have a sailor pen, it really is such a more delightful experience writing, like no catching on the paper whatsoever. Not that there ever really was, but it, it definitely just feels a bit more smooth when you're writing. Um, love the way it lays down ink right now. It's just, it's just really comfortable and really lovely. And I'm so happy that I had this one taken care of because now I can put it back in rotation and be very, very pleased with it whenever I do get to write with it. So onward beyond pen servicing and customizations. Anytime you go to a pen show, you're going to be faced with a huge amount of temptation. Table after table of beautiful, beautiful things. Uh, the Ohio Pen Show in particular tends to lean towards the vintage market, I would say. There are, of course, a handful of modern pen designers there. Uh, Pilot always has a table. Tatcha has a table. Uh, Narwhal has a table. I finally tried out Narwhal lip nibs for the first time. I really do love the fine nib. I'm not such a big fan of the medium or the bold. And I'm intrigued by the stub. I think I'd need to play with it for a bit to, to really decide whether or not I liked it, but I was very happy that I got to stop at the table and play around for some time. Uh, and Le Bon is usually there, but they weren't there on Friday. So I'm not sure if they made it after I was, I, I had left, but, um, those companies generally are always at the show. There's always something really beautiful. A couple of guys have some really beautiful Namiki, uh, Arushi pens every time that they come and they're absolutely gorgeous. But I knew going in that I had one particular vintage pen in mind that I wanted to pick up. And it's a pen that I've been wanting for years and years now. And that is the Pelican 400NN. The 400NN comes in this gorgeous brown tortoise colorway and it's got that semi translucent striped barrel and it's it's beautiful it is a pen that has always spoken to me and I just I really really want one but to be honest I know so little about vintage pens it's one of those I don't know what I don't know situations I've watched countless videos about pelican pens this particular vintage pelican pen but the pen does run usually $300, $400. And for me, since I don't have any familiarity with this or what I should really be looking for, or how to make those kinds of decisions, it feels like a lot of money to plunk down. That said, I kept roaming the tables looking and I saw some amazing examples, but I was really, really drawn to a table run by Rick Propus. Uh, Rick is also known as the Penguin, Penguin, uh, and he's really, really reputable within the fountain pen community uh, for his knowledge of vintage pens, specifically vintage pelicans. There's an amazing, amazing video that he talks about that where he talks about um, the evolution of pelican and everything. I'll link that below. Uh, strongly recommended. Just really fascinating if you are interested in fountain pen history at all, like not necessarily in buying a vintage fountain pen, but you're just curious about how the evolution of design works. Um, such a really fascinating guy, super interesting to talk to, really, really patient. I stopped his table probably like three or four times. Um, and then finally, one of the people working the table was asking, so we've seen you a few times. Do you have some questions? And I did. I asked like a ton of questions, but again, and, and I saw like 
the the vintage 400s and then the vintage 400 nns and i just i just wasn't really sure i i really wanted to but i just didn't feel like it was quite there yet and then rick pointed out a, a, a different pen that i had been looking at as well it just sort of caught my eye you guys know i love a smaller pen like pocket pens are my thing and he was like if you're not sure and i because i'd explained you know i'm just i'm just not very knowledgeable about these particular vintage pens he's like why don't you take a look at this one and the this one that he had pointed out was the pelican 140. so this lovely little pen is really really phenomenal it is from what i have done the research on from what was designed and may and manufactured between around 1954 to around 1965 uh there are various ways to sort of date your pen i think mine is from the earlier part of the 1954 ish uh area just because it so the green green and black stripe was made starting in 1954 and then there are just certain little indicators i don't know that seem to place it around there but again i don't really know what i'm talking about when i'm talking about vintage pens so it's somewhere in that time frame and it doesn't really matter <laughs> but it is such a good writer oh my goodness so i have one modern uh pelican and i really do like it uh, it's one of my like wettest writers. I, you, I, I just talked about how sometimes a wet writing pen is just too much for me, but the uh, M400 White Tortoise Pelican with the medium nib is just on the line of like, this looks good with my style of handwriting. This little guy is a fine nib and oh my goodness, I... I just love this thing. I have been writing with this guy so much. It's got a really cool ebonite feed and it's just so cool. Like my writing looks really phenomenal. It's, it's not a firm nib. It's pretty flexy and it's not, I'm not going crazy with it because I, I certainly don't want to spring the tines or anything, but there's just this amount of bounce to it. That's just super comfortable to write with. And it makes my writing look amazing. Like I've been writing my signature so much just to see what it looks like with different slight level variants in pressure. And I just like it so much. And it's really, really easy to use. Like it's just a piston filler and like, oh, it's just so cute and it fits my hand so well. Oh my goodness. Like this is the perfect sized pen for me. And it does make me feel a lot better about, you know, getting more comfortable with a vintage Pelican and then diving in to maybe picking up that uh, 400NN, which I probably will, let's be honest. But the other great thing is now I also have a contact within that realm. So Rick runs a little store, the Penguin Pen online and he has beautiful beautiful uh vintage pens on there primarily again like pelican but he has other uh vintage brands as well and he services them he guarantees them to work for you for three years and he's just such a really cool guy like i said make sure you watch that video where he talks about the evolution of pelican because it's just like he's a wealth of knowledge and i love that uh, i wish i'd had more of a chance to talk to him at the show actually but yeah, so yeah, a hundred, the 140, this is my, this was my one new pen or at least new to me pen purchase, uh, from the trip. And I could not be more happy about it. Okay. The other thing I always have to be wary about at a pen show is whether or not I pick up an overabundance of ink. This time I was able to rein myself in. I only picked up three different bottles and I'm so pleased with all three of these inks. I actually have uh, one pen already inked up with one of the purchases and another one that will be filled uh, in just a little bit. The first place that I stopped at was Lemur Inc. Lemur Inc. is one of my favorite online retailers. They're in my neighbor, Indiana, uh, and it's run by John Phelan. John Phelan is a lovely, lovely guy. I've spoken to him at the uh, pen shows that I've been at. He's always really, really sweet and very, very friendly. He's got great customer service. Anytime I've had questions online, he's really, really quick to respond. And he just has a really lovely store. 
great selection. Uh, the free shipping cap is 20 bucks. You're not going to find that many places right now. Uh, so I am always shopping with him whenever I can. I particularly love his stock of Vinta inks. Vinta is my favorite shimmer ink company. I know shimmer inks are super duper polarizing. Some people love them. Some people hate them. I fall in the former category. Um, and in particular, I love Vinta's shimmer. Uh, I have lots and lots of shimmer inks and this is the one that I can almost always count on being able to work well, even in an extra fine pen. Uh, that's not knocking any other company. Like I said, I have lots and lots of shimmer ink. Uh, it's just for whatever reason, I don't know if they use a finer particle or what. It just, it just always works for me. And I love the colors. I just think they're beautiful. I picked up La Combini. Uh, La Combini is this beautiful pink with uh, gold shimmer. I've been wanting it for probably more than a year now. And it's either always out of stock or I'm in another buying jag for something else at the time when I do see it. So it's just really convenient that I finally, finally picked up a bottle. I love it. I'm so happy with it. And then the other one was an unexpected purchase for me. I wasn't really familiar with this particular one. This is Vinta Inks Hadabon. Hadabon is kind of like a grayish purple and it has a little bit of silver sparkle in there. And I absolutely love this color. I absolutely love it. Um, it's just really, really beautiful and I'm really, really happy to have it. And I'm very excited to ink up pens with that. Uh, and then besides Lemur Ink, I also stopped at the Federalist Pens and Paper table and I picked up the Van Diemen's Birds of a Feather European Honey Bee Eater Breast. This is one of those inks that's been on my list since I first discovered the Birds of a Feather line. Um, I have tons on this list of things that I want to get, but this one in particular is this sort of really light tealy turquoise and it's just it's really pretty it's like I don't even know exactly how to describe it there's no shimmer but it has loads of shading in it it just I don't know there's just something really lovely and it, I've got it right now inked in my newly ground or, or I should say my newly serviced uh, Sailor Dragon Palace Pro Gear Slim and it looks so good and it matches so well. It's just a really, really beautiful combination. I'm really, really happy to have that one too. So that was it for my Ohio Pen Show haul. Um, I will probably be doing full reviews for each of the nibs and the pens and the inks at a later date, but I definitely just wanted to get this out there to share my experience. Like I said, I had so much fun there. Uh, if I got to see you and chat with you, that was lovely. Uh, if I didn't, I'm so sorry I missed you, but you can always pop into the comments on any of my videos. There's never a time where I wouldn't be excited to talk about fountain pens. Um, additionally, if this video was entertaining, uh, interesting, useful to you in any way, please do consider hitting that like button or potentially even the subscribe. Um, if you've made it all the way to the end of this video, you are absolutely awesome. Thank you to everyone so much for joining me and hopefully I will see you next time. Bye-bye.